everybody. Zero Fossil Fuel reporting. I would be remiss if I did not at least once show the new Pulse Width Modulator version 2 connected to the Energy Builders Network 8-inch prototype cell that I have here in my possession. Uh, you can see it running in the picture here. I've got uh, the 8-inch cell in the background. The, let me zoom in a little bit here. The output of the bubbler loops down and comes around to the top of my secondary bubbler. Out my secondary bubbler through a T-fitting that I just close off with my thumb when I'm ready to take a measurement. And of course the HHometer. Here is the version 2 pulse width modulator. You can see it. The fan on top is spinning. It is totally cool to the touch, except for this filtering capacitor that is connected directly across the input leads, which is providing the enormous inrush currents that are being required of the, of the cell every time the MOSFET energizes. This thing is actually at about 35 degrees centigrade right now. The capacitor is rated for 80 degrees centigrade, and it was harvested from a UPS, which should have a very low ESR. ESR stands for Equivalent Series Resistance. An electrolytic capacitor that has a low ESR is essential for an application like this because of the high energy bursts that you're asking the capacitor to produce. Um, your traditional Filtering electrolytic capacitors are not adequate for a job like this. This this capacitor is rated at 1,000 microfarads, which doesn't seem like a lot, but for the transients, for the very quick transients, it's plenty. It is rated at 1,000 microfarads, 250 volts. Like I said, it was harvested from a UPS that itself generates square waves, uh, which creates a modified sine wave, but that's another topic. And th these capacitors should be able to hold up. I'm just... I'm a little leery about this one. It's getting pretty warm. But anyway, I took some advice and uh, I mounted this fan the way it's supposed to be so that it blows down into the heat sink and exhausts out the side. And there's the waveform that it's producing right now. It is oscillating at about, uh, let me see what scale have I got it on. It's about 2500 hertz is the oscillating frequency and it's running at about, I want to say, 65 to 70 percent duty cycle. Uh, the, on the scope, the low part of the trace is when the MOSFET is energized, and the high part of the, and this part of the trace is where the MOSFET actually turns off. Okay, you get a quick transient across the MOSFET from the back EMF induced just by the inductance of the heavy gauge wire leading to the cell. You can see that the voltage starts to taper off ever so slightly and then on the next pulse it pulls it down and gives you another another high current energizing pulse into the cell. So that's how that's working and it's been running at 25 amps for about 30 minutes. No particular reason for 25 amps, I just chose that as, a, as an arbitrary value to start to start the uh, production and for the electrolyte concentration that I have I'm going to guess that uh, at 60 percent duty cycle now I'm going to say that it would probably want to draw a peak of about 40 to 45 amps if I were to run this straight DC. So obviously we can go quite a bit more concentrated on the electrolyte inside the cell to uh, increase the amount of output but at 25 amps in RMS, limited by the pulse width modulator, I'm generating almost exactly 2 liters per minute from this cell. And that's about what you would expect from a 5 mmW cell. In just a second, I will uh, pause the camera and put it on the tripod and take an actual reading for you and crunch the numbers. Well folks, I was going to videotape an actual measurement with the EBN cell and the pulse width modulator, but in the middle of disconnecting the power and re repositioning the camcorder, it decided to just up and die on me. So 
I am now in the in the uh, market for another camcorder and hopefully I'll have one soon to replace this one so that I can continue recording more videos.